Hey guys, Urban Combat Survivor here. Um, this is going to be a video. It's uh, directed specifically to uh, Hibernia Sun. Um, I made a video uh, regarding uh, the specific threat videos that were going around the uh, Pepperoni and uh, and Landshark 22 uh, did uh, a good series on three possible scenarios and uh, Hibernia's son is uh, he's pretty clear and he has a couple of really good videos about an EMP threat uh, I'm making a video about this because I think a lot of people just don't read page after page of comments if it gets there and uh, and because I think uh, uh, I think more people need to hop into the discussion here, so um, I hope you're okay with that, uh, Irish. I hope you're cool with that, and uh, I hope you'll post this up as a, I'll put it as a video response to uh, to your uh, pepperoni video. Um, the reason that I uh, that I don't get specific, I mean, you made some good points in the comments down there. Uh, one of the things you said is. Uh, you know, aren't I kind of putting myself at risk if I don't get ready for specific threats and uh, things like a Faraday cage? And um, one, I think other people have made good points about uh, the limited usefulness of a Faraday cage, just in that, yeah, if you saved radios and that kind of thing, they're, uh, you know, what transmissions are they picking up? So unless you and everyone in, in, that you're going to be dealing with has put radios in a Faraday cage, um, you know, th there's going to be limited usefulness even if they have. But uh, that's not even my issue. My issue is this. If you allow people that are against um, the concept of prepping, people that think that uh, everybody who's prepping is a chicken little, we're all screaming that the sky is falling, when the reality is that anyone who sits and, and just follows any logical course of thinking can see that it's simply a wise move. It's like putting a baby cage across a, a, a staircase so a kid doesn't fall, in my opinion. But I think if we talk about specific threats too much, I mean, mentioning specific threats is one thing, but if we concentrate too specifically, I think what that does is it allows them to frame the debate about an EMP, which is the, the example that you use. Um, you can say all day long that once someone is informed they can't argue the threat of an EMP you can say it all day long but the reality is the masses in general don't read they hear 30 second sound bites and they fly with it man that's it that's what they base their opinion on some uh, some person that says what they want to hear on the news somewhere is going to convince them that an EMP threat isn't real uh, and all it's going to take to convince them is a 30 second blurb so uh, I think I think we all do a disservice if we specify too heavily. Uh, mentioning is one thing, and I think it's a good idea to be ready for different things like that. If you prep in general, but you do things like make a Faraday cage. Um, actually, uh, I got a plan to pick up a metal cabinet for uh, for just that this weekend. Um, if it works out, if not, maybe it'll be next weekend. But uh, and I plan on making a video on how to make a Faraday cage because it's so simple. It's just a simple ground wire hooked into your pipes. But um, I don't want I don't want to allow anyone who uh, whose goal is simply to derail the concept of being prepared generally. Uh, I don't want to allow them the ammunition to kind of frame the debate for us uh, as intelligent people um, I like to think of myself as one of those as intelligent people we uh, we need to frame the debates for ourselves we need to choose the topic of conversation and the foundation of, of our system of logical progression and if we allow them let me, let me give you an example here. Let's say, uh, you know, Joey Smith shows up. And uh, he's got a sense of wrongness because so many people in this country and even around the world do. Um, I actually got a PM from a guy in the Netherlands. So uh, even one or two people in Europe are finally starting to, to feel this wrongness. But we'll stick, with, we'll stick with the U.S. Let's say Joey Smith comes along and he's thinking, wow, that's... Uh, Maybe I should 
Maybe I should do something. Maybe there's some kind of precaution that I can take. And um, so they go on the internet. They start Googling this stuff. They start Googling how to be ready for an emergency. And what they wind up with is uh, some results on YouTube. So they start clicking away. And what they come across is a video. And the first video they come across is somebody talking about prepping. But the comments are full of people disputing the specific thing that they're prepping for rather than disputing the concept of prepping itself. See, this is what this is what naysayers do in every situation. They can't address the issue. You're right. Nobody can say that EMP is not a real threat. They can't say it. Um, not if they're informed. They can say it all day long, but it just shows their ignorance. But that doesn't stop them from being ignorant. Willful ignorance is a huge problem in the United States. Uh, I don't know how bad it is elsewhere, but I know in the U.S., people just choose. They choose to bury their head in the sand, and as long as their TV turns on and they got gas in their car, they're pretty happy. So that 30-second soundbite that convinced those three or four people that are commenting and framing the debate for you, they're choosing the issue. Rather than choosing the issue of preparing, what Joe Smith is going to show up and see is a bunch of people that are doing their damnedest to make you look like a nut job. Not because you're wrong. Not because you're nuts. But because it's outside of their comfort zone. It's outside of their ability to accept the possibility that at some point in their lives they're going to be responsible for their own safety. So they argue it. So they fight it. They call you names, and they try to frame the debate. So I don't think you're wrong at all about the EMP, the EMP threat. Um, I don't think Landshark 22 is wrong about the possible economic collapse uh, or the, um, the, the break in the supply chain that he talked about. I think you guys are, are both um, following solid, logical courses of thought. But I don't think that's going to matter to naysayers. And my goal, I don't know, I mean, I'm assuming that you guys have the same goal that I have, and that's this. I'm here to try to get the information out there to help someone who may not have thought of the things that we've thought of. Um, I've learned a ton watching your videos. I know I've learned a bunch watching a bunch of other videos. I hope that people have learned from watching my videos. Well, if we... If we lose, say, 7 out of 10 viewers because when they show up, we've allowed naysayers to come along. Look, we know there's trolls all over the internet. YouTube is no exception to that. So we know there's trolls that are going to show up and they're going to just attack. It's what they do. Well, someone that doesn't have any basis for, for um, their own foundation for, these, for this system... For they, they don't have, let me, re, let me rephrase that, someone who comes to the table with zero knowledge, they're starting from scratch. Um, I know that your videos are a little more advanced or probably a lot more advanced in some instances than mine are. My goal is to get those people that are just starting the thinking process. And my hope is that people that are doing the more advanced videos will kind of embrace the concept that Look, it doesn't matter if we're talking about prepping or politics or anything else. You cannot allow them, the opponents, the naysayers, to frame the debate. So uh, this is not at all... Um, I, I didn't intend for anybody to feel like I was attacking them in my video response. Uh, I'm kind of a plain-spoken guy, and uh, I just jump right to the point uh, when I'm talking. And particularly in that video, I felt kind of time constrained because I was wanting I wanted to get so much in there, but uh, I don't at all disagree with your assessments on probably ninety five percent of your channel. Um, I don't think you're I don't think you're the crazy guy that you might be allowing for them to call you and scare off those people that are looking for help. 
if you allow them to pigeonhole you into this specific little place. So, um, I know this is just my philosophy, and uh, I don't have any right to project this onto you or anyone else. Um, all I can do is make a video like this in the hopes that it makes sense to you and that you'll at least think about it. It's all I ask. At least think about it. Because, uh, you know, in the end, if we're not here to help other people, or if we are, you know, we're here to help other people, and they don't get that help because we've allowed someone else to, uh, you know, to run them down rabbit paths, then, then basically we're all just wasting air, man. We're wasting our time doing things like this rather than taking more steps to get ready. You know, I mean, I could take this time to to work in my garden. I could take this time to do a million other things, but I'm trying to help as best I can because I feel that that's something that I can contribute back to people that are looking for that help. So uh, I hope you understand. I hope you'll post this video up when I send it as a response. And uh, I hope you at least think about it. Urban Combat Survivor, signing off.